Some people buy a new colony and they stick it somewhere around their property. Oh, in a few weeks or two, it's bothering the kids on the playground or it's, you know, bothering the neighbor's clothesline, pooping on clothes over there. You just have to move it. And so what do you do? You, where do you move it to, right? You got, I want to face a different direction. What's up, David Burns here. Thanks for joining me. You know, a lot of times we want to move our hives and people ask me, when's the best time I should move my hive? And the, let me start by saying the worst time to move your hive is when they're all very active, like in the middle of spring or summer when they're all foraging and bringing in all the nectar, because all those foragers have a really good memory about where home is. It's so good that if you move their colony while they're foraging and they come back, they really aren't like us. They really don't know what to do. Let's take a look at this and I'll show you. Come on back toward the wall. I okay. can't see. Okay. Wow, ladies, back, you're, you're fine. But any, this is a point to make that you just can't pick up a hive here and then move it over there. All the foragers are locked onto that spot, like a GPS, and that's where they're going to go. Now they're confused. Nope, still not going to find it. They're just right there where it's supposed to be. Put it back in the position it was. And watch, film all the bees, how quickly they go back into their hive. Okay, now we can't drop it because he's filming. <laughs> One, two, three. Look how heavy that is. About there. Mm -hmm. right, actually, look, at, look at them going in. Actually, see the foot? You want to, it should probably move over a little move bit. Move over a little bit. Toward you. One, two, three. I'm seeing where the, uh, the old thing was. There you go. That, look right, right, David? that looks good enough. They'll find it no matter what. Now, yeah. Yeah. All right, so if we need to move a hive, like we don't want it there anymore, what are our options without losing all of our foragers? We can move it two inches a day, either direction, mm -hmm. and they, they continue to reorientate. Or we can find somebody that lives three miles away, load it into our truck at night with a screen on the entrance, take it to their property, leave it there two weeks. And then when we bring it back to our property, we can put it anywhere we want to, because that forces the bees to take a new orientation flight by moving it away. Plus all those foragers basically died over there, right? You know, these new foragers are gonna reorientate. If you do it less than two miles, as soon as they get airborne, they know the surroundings, they can go back to the old location. That's why you have to go more than two miles. Three miles is money. But if we wanted to move it against the wall where the ladies so, uh, what's the word for muscular? <laughs> they use their muscles to move it back there. If I wanted it to permanently be against that wall, I can move it about a foot a day backward. I can't move it a foot a day sideways. That's too much of a change. But if back and forward, you can move it a lot. We could probably pick that hive up today and move it in right over there today. But what's going to happen is the bees are going to land there, right? So we can take an empty box, one frame, and put one frame for the foragers to land on. They'll fly in and land. Will they leave? No. They will not return on a foraging flight. Why? They had no what they had nothing to do with the resources they brought in. It's an empty frame, no comb on it, nobody to transfer it to a location. So the foragers just sit there now. So at night you take the frame out. Take it over to the bottom board or you moved them and bang them like I did over there onto the bottom board. The foragers go in. Now it may take a day or two for you to keep doing that and finally the foragers are going to be like, okay, I'm not riding this train anymore. I'm not an idiot. All right, I'm just going to come back to this high from now on. So you can do it that way, a capture, a capture place. Or you can move that hive over there and put a like a folded chair up against it where when they come out, they, they're in, instantly bumping into that chair that forces them to take a new orientation flight. That works nine out of 10 times. And I've done that a lot. Some of the hives in the back, I'll move to the front and they always find this wall to be identifiable trait and most of them will always take a new orientation flight. So you can see if you move a colony away, Kind of, if you notice, look at all the bees that are having trouble knowing exactly what to do. They just kind of fly around in the space where the hive used to be. A little confused, not sure what to do. So even if you move it six, seven, eight feet away, they're not going to ever find it. If they do, it's going to take a long time to figure that out. And look what happens when we move it back into position. 
Look how the bees just flood back because they know, oh, this is home, this is where it's at. So if you wanna move your colony, here's some good suggestions for you. I really think where I live, the best time to move my hive is in the winter time because foragers kind of lose track of foraging. They're hunkered down. I'm amazed today. It's only about, you know, the sun's setting tonight. Um, I think it's probably 60 degrees. It's not down to 50 yet. And all my, all my colonies, they've just, they've shut down. I don't see any activity at all. That's how cool it is. And so as time goes on into winter, the foragers just aren't foraging. After the first frost, there's nothing to go out to. So they're all just staying home. So if you move the colony there, you're not gonna lose foragers because nobody's foraging, get it? That's kind of cool, so you can move it in the winter. One caveat, if you move your hives during the winter time, some people are afraid that by shaking them, you might break up the cluster, the cluster may fall and not get regrouped before the evening cold weather. So that is something to think about. Uh, just try not to jar them too much if you're moving them. Be a little gentle to kind of keep that cluster a little more tight. And that's one way to get around that. But I've had best of luck moving them in the winter time. So in other words, listen, this is kind of cool. So if you take a colony that is going in and out pretty fast during a pretty good nectar flow, you really can get by with moving it two inches every hour or two. They just keep adapting to that slight movement. Now, if you moved it like 12 inches all at once, it's gonna look chaotic out front until they figure that 12 inches out. They can probably still get it, but it's gonna take hours for them to get familiar again. So you can move your colony by moving it just a few inches a couple of three times a day. Another way that I've done it my son-in-law has bees, my daughter and son-in-law, about 12 miles away. I can take colonies here that I wanna move. I can take them over to their apiary, keep them there for a couple of weeks. And then when I bring them back here, I put them here in a new location. Because every time you move them that great of a distance for that amount of time, the foragers take a reorientation flight. That's another way to do it. But if you just decide to willy-nilly pick up a hive and move it 15 yards over that way, gonna be a lot of confusion. Now, another thing that we do sometimes when we do have to make those movements on the same property, we don't have the luxury of time or distance to move them further away. I've moved them before and all the foragers go back to their old location. So in the old location, I put just a bottom board, a deep and a top cover and maybe two frames with nothing much, two, two frames. They don't have to have anything, no foundation. If you have foundation, you can put it on there, but nothing at much there. What I found is when foragers come back to their old location with a load of you know, nectar and honey, uh, uh, pollen on their legs and they come in there, uh, there's nowhere to put it and everybody's gone. So the forager's not too excited about leaving because they still have their load on them they can't get rid of, they can't go out again. So you collect all these foragers at the home base on this frame or two where the big hive used to be. And at the end of the day, about right now, when it's kind of you know nice outside, but it's getting to be evening, I will pick up that frame and walk it over to the new location hive and I'll just bang the bees out on the bottom board or on the top of the, I'll take the lid off, bang them back inside. And you know what? Only after a couple of days of doing that, the foragers, <laughs> the forager, I can't even talk. The foragers are like, hey, I'm not gonna land in that old spot and sit there and do nothing and have to be carried all the way over there and then banged out of a frame again. I'm gonna memorize this place. That's kind of cool. Bees aren't stupid, you know. It's kind of cool how they figure that out. But I learned that trick from an old beekeeper one time. He said, ah, just, just move them where you want them, put a box over there and collect the foragers, shake them over there a few times. They'll get tired of that and just get adapted to their new location. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? All right, well, that's just a quick video for you guys on how some options are if you wanna move some colonies. Again, I wanna thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I love you guys. I love you watching my beekeeping channel. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun together, don't we? All right, give me a thumbs up. I'll see you next time.